Okay, so in this uh, problem, we have this um, information about a function, and uh, we're trying to sketch its graph. So um, let me, uh, you know, just draw an axis here. And so basically, what we're going to do is just sort of go one by one here and take each one of these characteristics and use them to get a rough picture. Now. Um, I'm going to draw one graph, but um, you know there's many, many, many others that that would also work as long as they satisfy all these um, conditions. So um, here, let's start off with the first one. The the first one says that f of x is equal to zero at x equals negative five, zero, and five. So um, if, for example, this is uh, negative five, and this is uh, positive 5 then what this is saying is that my function has to hit right here right here and right here so the function has to equal 0 at each of these points okay now here it says that the limit as x approaches negative infinity so over here in this direction over here this is negative infinity as x goes in this direction um, the function should go towards infinity. So if x is going this way, my function has to be going up to uh, infinity. Okay. Now the next one, uh, the next condition says, okay, um, the limit as x approaches positive infinity, so over here on this side, positive infinity, should equal to negative 3. In other words, if, you know, negative 3, let's just say this is negative 3, my function should be approaching negative 3. So I don't know where it's coming from, but this is basically saying that on this direction, on this side, the right side, I have a horizontal asymptote there. So I'm just going to draw the asymptote. And once I know more information, then I'll know whether it's coming from down here or up here. Okay, and then this last condition says, okay, um, f prime of x is equal to zero at uh, x equals negative three, 2.5, and seven. So at each of these points, my function should be flat, right? Because the derivative equals to zero means that you have either a you know, high spot, a low spot, maybe uh, that one's not very good flat spot like that um, so mm -hmm. here let's uh, so here mm -hmm. I should have a, a flat spot so right here um, at negative 3 so let's say negative 3 is right here and at x equals to 7 let's say 7 is right there so it, at each one of these little arrows it should be flat so I think we can that's enough to uh, draw the the picture um, will come, you know, this way it's coming down. Now it has to hit here, and then it has to be flat at negative 3, so let's just do that. But I know that it has to go back mm -hmm. here, so let's just go back right here. And then um, I know that it's um, flat here. So that means that it has to um, also have a uh, flat spot. So, um, but now, well, should it come down or, well, I know that, um, you know, um, since there's nothing between here and five, well, I could either uh, come down and then uh, come back up, or you could have also gone up and then down. So maybe I'll draw a couple of different variations that still satisfy all these. So just to give you an idea of what what the variations are. But I know that it's going to hit right here. And then it has another flat spot right here. But then I know that it has to go towards um, negative 3 as you go to infinity. So it has to come back down and then follow this point right here. Um, so now just to kind of give you another idea of what else could have happened, um, you could have also had a function that comes down here, and then maybe, 
you know, it doesn't specify that it has to be flat here, but it doesn't say that it can't be. So you can just make it touch there, be flat here, and then come down here, and then come back up, and then come here, and then let's say it comes back up, flat, and then comes, and then goes that way. And that's also allowed. So, you know, there are lots of different variations that you could get. Okay, so here we have quite an interesting problem. We have two functions. Uh, g of x is square root of x, and f of x is kx squared, where k is a constant. So it doesn't specify what uh, k is. Okay, so the first one says, um, find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of g at the point 4, co comma 2. So, um, okay, so to find the slope, well, the first thing I need to do is find the derivative, of course. So the derivative, oh sorry, of g, not f prime. What am I doing? Okay, g prime of x is equal to, so the derivative of square root of x is one over two square root of x. And so then uh, the slope is equal to plugging in the point, the x value, in this case four, into this guy, so one over two square root of four, this gives me one fourth. Okay, so this is the uh, slope. Okay, now if I wanna find the equation, well, the next thing I need to do is find the, um, the y-intercept. So I've got uh, y equals to mx plus b, um, and so I'll plug in what I know. I know that my slope is one fourth, and I know that my x value is uh, four, and I know the y value is two. Okay, so that's great. Um, so this means that uh, b is gonna equal to one when I solve for it, right? Because four times one fourth, that's one, you move it over, and so you get b is equal to one. So then uh, my tangent line, my equation, is y equals to one fourth x plus one, mx plus b. Okay, so that's the equation of the tangent line. Okay, now for c, um, it says that if the graph of f contains the point four comma two, find k. So what, what this is saying is, so f of x is uh, k x squared. Now what it's saying is that it contains the point four comma two. So uh, if you plug in four for x, uh, y is equal to two, or uh, in other words, f of, f of four is equal to two. So um, you know, with this information, well, you, so you can solve for k because then two is equal to uh, k times four squared, which is 16. So then um, k is simply equal to one over eight. Okay, let me break this up here. Okay, so I've found k um, so then, um, why don't I might as well, uh, let me just write down now, f of k is constant. So f of x is equal to 1 8 x squared. Um, okay, so then it says, okay, where does the graph of f intersect the tangent line found in part b? So in other words, it's asking where does this function f equal to this line 1 fourth x plus 1. So, you know, what we're doing is we're solving the equation. We're saying, let me move this over a little bit. Um, when does 1 eighth x squared equal to 1 fourth x plus 1? So, um, to solve this guy, well, the easiest thing to do first 
is let's just get rid of um, the fractions, everything. So let's just multiply everything, both sides, by 8. So that would give me x squared um, equals to 2x plus 8 when you distribute everything through. And since this is a quadratic equation, let's move the uh, 2x to the left and the 8 to the left. Okay. And then we can factor this guy. Um, so um, x and x, and then two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add up to negative 2. That would be negative 4 and positive uh, 2. And so then from this I get um, x equals to 4 and x equals to negative 2. So there's, there's two spots where um, they intersect. And so, I mean, that makes sense, right? Because 1 8 x squared is a parabola and 1 4 x plus 1 is a line. So you would expect, you know, to have a parabola and a line. If they uh, hit, they're probably going to uh, intersect twice. But those are the uh, x values where they intersect.